Howdy, I'm Jason and this is the Shop Dog Pinto and today is the video that you and me become experts at mounting our own bead locks. I got a set of TR bead locks, 17 inch and some 37 inch Falcon Wild Peak MT tires. Now, I've never done this before, but what could go wrong? You know, hey, I was a camera guy on an internet off-road show for a couple of years. Should go fine. Got instructions. Let's get busy. The wheels I'll be using are these TR Beadlock Hard Rock 17 by 10 inch hoops. They are a cast aluminum wheel with a machined face and I opted for the slim beadlock ring in red. They will get stuffed inside these 37 inch tall by 12 and a half inch wide Falcon Wild Peak MT-01 mud terrain tires. I dig the looks of these things and can't wait to get them mounted up. So now that you know the players, the first thing that you want to do is figure out which side of the tire is going to face out or face the, the, the front of the rim here. Now I learned the hard way that not all tires have the same sidewall. So the Wild Peaks here have this cool raised lettering on one side and then a lower profile lettering on the other side. I want this on the outside. Now, uh, important thing is to make sure that you have your valve stem in. Now, uh, just make sure that you install that before you get your tire in because that's super difficult. Uh, afterwards. The benefit of having bead locks is the fact that they offer a, hey bud, hey Pinto, you're gonna help out with this? This is probably gonna get a little tricky. Never done this before, so you know, this is gonna be kind of fun. But uh, with this kind of help, <laughs> we should have this no problem. Now, the bead locks use a traditional bead on the inside of the wheel, and then here on the front, you're gonna go ahead and use the, the, the tire will sit here, and then this aluminum clamp ring will actually attach here and pinch that. So that way you can air down. I mean, everybody knows why you do this. You air these down farther than you could just relying on this bead and air pressure holding your tire on the rim. So now you have this positive force, clamping force here holding the tire on the rim. You won't slip the rim, the tire around the rim under power. So now that we know the direction and what I wanna do, I want this raised lettering here facing outwards on the truck. Um, I'm digging these Falcons, so let's represent with these uh, rad logos on the outside. What I'm gonna do now is simply flip that down. I have a little bit of soapy water in the spray bottle here that I just broke. And I'm gonna spray a little bit down there. And now this will just allow me to since I know I want the wheel facing out with those letters, you just kind of persuade it into the rim like that. That wasn't so bad. Okay, now let's get this thing up into a workspace. So I've got a five gallon bucket here that I'm gonna use. And this will be my handy dandy workspace. Now, here's what's next. You want this bead right here to sit nice and flush on this lip here. So I'm gonna just kind of give it a little tweak there and then just rubber mallet that into place. And there you go. You can actually see it has a nice even seat. It's sitting level all the way around. Now it's time to actually get our trim ring, our actual beadlock ring into place. I'm just gonna match up the TR, the TR beadlock logo down here on the stem. Don't know why, just like it that way. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna capture the rim in these four corners first. Now it's just time to take your time and get this thing clamped down into place. Very methodically, not time to rush here. 
And I'm just doing this by hand, finger tight, to get these four down into place. And so it's just now captured. It's not gonna move around on me. So now it's just time to place all of the rest of the bolts into the ring. Let's do that. Now I'm just gonna continue to buzz these down finger tight. Get used to this pattern because it's now time to just chase this tightening sequence around the rim, what will probably seem like a million times. And what we're doing now I'm actually gonna just call it. Let's go into time-lapse mode and finish this first round of just tighten these things, tightening these things. Now that we got our first round, basically what I would consider finger tight, there's a nice even gap underneath here. And you can see that that's the rubber in, in between that lip there. And now eventually what we want to do is we want to see that disappear and this to pull all the way down to the aluminum. So now, time to get our torque wrench out and for me to get my glasses. Getting old, not that fun. So you're gonna do, want to do three basic passes at this thing. You're gonna want to do one at 10 foot pounds and then 15 and then 20. So right now it's at 10 and we'll do in our entire crisscross pattern at 10. And this is where things are gonna take a while. So just think nice thoughts, think of awesome off-roading and get busy. Take your time. Don't rush this. So we're gonna move on up to the 15 pound foot and do another pass. Work our way around. Okay. Happy with that pass, let's move on to our final torque to 20. And let's get busy. Okay, that seemed to, okay, that seemed to do it. We got everything down to 20, the bead, the trim ring is completely flush with the inside of the lip of the rim. We look really good. So let's go ahead and put some air in it. Now, you should not need to go any higher. They say right on the side of the tire anywhere that you need to go any higher than 40 PSI. I'll bet you this thing hanging like this will pop a bead much sooner than that. But let's put some air in it, see what we got. So now what it's gonna do, since the bead is attached up here, no problem, and we, I think we have a pretty good seal, it's now pushing the bead down. Let's see if it holds any air. Yes, it is, and so it's now pushing the bead down, and sometimes you hear a pop, sometimes you don't. When tires do that, let's see what, if this one does. Do I feel it moving? I can feel the tire sidewall getting hard, so we're definitely uh, inflating. I'm gonna go right to 30 PSI and see what we got. Yep, it's holding 20 PSI. So it did one of those gentle push outs, it never popped. Seems to have worked. I'm gonna listen here. So we're gonna get it up to 35 PSI and we're gonna listen for any air leaks around the rim here.
Seems pretty good. Let's go ahead and put the valve stem in. I'm going to go ahead and get that prepped and ready. And that just goes right in there like that. And let's see what we got. What we ended up with pressure wise. I don't think I let out enough. 32.5, so that we're gonna set this to 30 on all of these for now. Thirty PSI. Seem to have handled that just fine. Wow. We'll put our valve cap back on. Let's get this thing up and see what it looks like. And yes, you can see the bead has evenly seated all the way around the back of this thing. We did it. So there you have it, do-it-yourself bead locks. Not that hard, just take your time, do it, uh, pay attention, do it right. We're gonna get these out on the trail and see how they do. Till next time, enjoy your drive. Let's go mount these things up, I'm excited. <laughs>